In this video, we're going to talk about tangent planes and linear approximation. Now, for tangent planes, a surface in R3 can be defined either explicitly and implicitly. If you recall, an explicit description for a surface would be z equals f of xy. The implicit description would be f of xyz equals zero. So when we define the tangent equation of a tangent plane, uh, we're going to have two different ways to define it depending on how our surface was defined, either explicitly or implicitly. So the idea behind a tangent plane is from this right here. If you look at this saddle-like surface, we have a smooth surface, and if we pick a point and we start to zoom into that point on our surface, the more and more we zoom, the surface actually starts to be, appear as a, a plane. So we'll define the equation of a tangent plane in our two forms depending on the way our surface was defined. Okay, so our equation of our tangent plane. Now for the implicit form of, of our surface, we have a, the plane tangent to our surface F at a point ABC is defined as the following. So notice that this equation we have the partial derivative of F uh, with respect to X evaluated at the point ABC times X minus A which would be the X value of our point. And then we do this for all three of the partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and z, and then it equals zero. Now the um, equation of our plane tangent to our surface in the Im explicit form, so notice it's tangent to z, so where the explicit form was z equals our surface. We're evaluating this at the point a, b, comma, f of a, b. Or, and then we have the surface defined as, or I'm sorry, the plane defined as z equals and it's very similar to our other form. The partial derivatives with respect to x here, evaluated at the point a, b, times x minus a, which is the x component of our point, plus the partial derivative with respect to y, plus f of a, b. So let's look at a couple of examples using each of these forms. For this example, we're going to find the plane tangent to our surface at the given point, negative one, two, three. Notice the form of our equation for our surface is given in the implicit form. So we're going to use the, this form of our tangent plane. So we need the partial derivative with respect to x first. So that's going to be, if we look at our terms, x is our only variable that we're considering right now. So this is going to be 6y plus 5z. And that's going to be times x minus our x value of our point, so x minus negative 1 and then do the same thing with respect to y, that's going to give us 6x plus 7z times y minus 2 and then plus our um, partial derivative with respect to z, that's going to be 7y plus 5x and that's times z minus 3 and all of this is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and plug in our point, negative 1, 2, and 3, and then simplify. So this first coefficient is going to turn into, well, let's see, 6 times negative oh, well, 2 for our y value, plus 5 times 3 for our z value, this is 27. This right here turns into x plus 1. Then we plug in negative 1 for x and 3 for z. We're going to end up here with 15 times y minus 2 and then when we plug in for z plus 5 I'm sorry z times 5 plus c times y plus 5x we end up getting um, 29 and that's times z minus 3 all right so let's just keep going distribute all of our coefficients we end up with 27x plus 27 plus 15y minus 30 plus 29z minus 87 equals zero. So lastly, our equation becomes 27x plus 15y plus 29z, and add up all these constants and you end up getting negative 90, add that to the other side, and we get 90. Okay, so this is the equation of the plane tangent to our surface at the given point. This time we're gonna do an example and notice that our surface is defined explicitly as z equals e to the xy and then we're going to evaluate 
um, or find the tangent plane of our surface at this point 713. So our um, explicit form for our tangent plane, we need the partial derivative with respect to x, so that's going to be e to the xy, times the derivative of the exponent with respect to x. The derivative of xy with respect to x is just going to be y. Okay? And that's going to be times x minus a, and in our case that's x minus 7. Right? Plus the partial derivative with respect to y, so that's going to be e to the xy, times the derivative of the exponent with respect to y, which is just going to be x, and that's times y minus b, and in our case that's y minus 1, plus this last term here is our function evaluated at our point, um, and then for the a and b value, the x and the y value. So that's going to be our function e to the xy, where we're plugging in our x, which is 7, and our y, which is 1. Okay. So we're going to simplify this. We get z equals, well first, um, before we simplify, as we simplify actually, let's plug in our values for x and y. So we end up getting z equals e to the 7 times 1 power, because we're plugging in x and y, times y, which is 1, and all of that is getting multiplied still by x minus 7, plus e to the 7 times 1 times x, which is 7, all of that times y minus 1, plus our constant out here, e to the 7. Right? So 7 equals, I'm sorry, z equals, this is going to be if we distribute e to the 7x minus 7 times e to the 7. Over here we get 7e to the 7y, so 7e to the 7y minus 7e to the 7, and then plus e to the 7. Okay, so just one more rewrite. Let's write our x term, e to the 7 times x, our y term, 7e to the 7y, and then our constants. Notice we have negative 7, negative 7, and 1. So those are all e to the 7s, so we end up with negative 13e to the 7. And this is the equation of our tangent plane of our surface, this time it defined um, explicitly and then evaluated or at this point, 7, 1, 3. Now we're going to talk about linear approximation. And this is um, directly related to linear approximation in R2 in, in two dimensions. We're just extending it to three dimensions. So if you recall, in two dimensions, the tangent line at a point gives a good approximation to your function near that point. The same thing happens in R3. So notice what we have here, the linear approximation to our surface, z, of that, um, which is equal to f of xy, at some point is equal to, this is the equation of the tangent plane at that point. So now this is just, we're calling it our linear approximation. So we have um, what essentially is that at a point, near our point in this case AB, so at points near AB on our surface, then Z, which is equal to F of XY, is approximately equal to L of XY, or approximately equal to our um, tangent plane evaluated at that point. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example of a linear approximation. For this example, our surface is described as f of x y, uh, x y equal to x y plus x minus y, and we're going to um, find the linear approximation at the point 2, 3, and then we're going to use that to estimate the function value at this particular point, 2.1 comma 2.99. So starting off with our linear approximation, well, let's go ahead and plug in our numbers already. We're evaluating this at the point 2, 3. So our partial derivative with respect to x is going to be y um, plus 1, and that's going to be times x minus 2. Then our partial de derivative with respect to y is going to be x minus 1 times y minus 3, plus our function evaluated at our point. That's going to be, let me just put it down here, that's going to be our whole function x, y plus x minus y, and we'll plug in our values in the very next step. So far we have 
um, y is 3, so 3 plus 1 times the quantity x minus 2, and then x is 2, so 2 minus 1 times the quantity y minus 3, and then we're just going to plug in 2 and 3 for all these x's and y's right here. So 2 times 3 minus, or excuse me, plus 2 minus 3. Okay, so we have 4 times x minus 2 plus 1 times y minus 3 plus 5. And if we keep going and simplify, distribute and simplify, we get 4x minus 8 plus y minus 3 plus 5. And finally, 4x plus y minus 6. So this is our linear approximation at 2 comma 3. And now we're going to use this to approximate our function um, at 2.1 comma 2.99. So we have our linear approximation that we just evaluated at 2 comma 3. We're going to use this to find our function value at the given point. So we want L of 2.1 comma 2.99 using the result we just got. So that's just going to be equal to 4 times 2.1 plus 2.99 minus 6. And then if we simplify this, we end up just getting 5.19. So this is our approximation for our function at this given point. The last thing we're going to talk about here is the differential dz. So for our surface uh, defined explicitly as z, where z is a function of x and y, for a point on that surface as we change the independent variables x and y, then the dependent variable z will also change. Now to approximate this change in z, we actually go to the tangent plane and we use the linear approximation to do so. So delta z, which is the change in our function f on our surface, can be approximated using dz, which is the change in l on our tangent plane. Okay, so for our example, we have our surface defined by z, where z is a function of x and y, and we're going to approximate the change in z as xy changes from 2 comma 5 to 2.04 comma 4.97. So we need to know the change in x and the change in y on our surface. So that's just going to be 2.04 minus 2 and 4.7 uh, 97 minus 5. So that's just going to give us 0 0.04 and negative 0 0.03. Okay? So the, that's going to be part of our calculation. Now also we need the partial derivatives with respect to x and y of our function. So that's going to be with respect to x, 2x minus 6y. And the partial derivative with respect to y is going to be negative 6x plus 1. And so we need to evaluate each of these partial derivatives at our point 2 comma 5. Okay. So when we do this, we just plug in 2 for x, 5 for y, and we're going to end up getting negative 26 here, and for the partial derivative with respect to y, we end up getting negative 11. Okay, so putting all this together, our partial derivative of z is equal to, or I'm sorry, approximates, or approximately equals dz, which is our partial derivative with respect to x at our point, which is, well, let's go ahead and, and write it um, in general first. At our point a, b, dx plus the partial derivative with respect to y at our point a, b, dy. Okay, so now we'll fill this in with our values. The partial derivative with respect to x at our point was negative 26 times dx, the change in x, which was 0.4 excuse me, 0 0.04. And then we're going to add the partial derivative at our point, evaluated at our point, which was negative 11, this was with respect to y, times the change in y, which is negative 0 0.03. Okay. So when we do this, we end up getting negative 1.04 minus, uh, plus, excuse me, 0 0.33. Final answer, negative 0.71. So this is approximately the change in z. 
So we'll say approximately the change in z on our surface defined as um, z of this function depending on x and y.